أبدأ بالحمد مصليا على محمد خير نبي نرسلا وذي من أقسام الحديث عدة وكل واحد أتى وحدة أولها الصحيح وهو ما اتصل إسناده ولم يشد أو يعلم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا Indeed all praise is due to Allah We praise Him Seek His aid and ask His forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our sins And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil which is in ourselves من يهده الله فلا مضل له Whoever Allah guides there is none who can misguide him. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ And whoever Allah chooses to be misguided, there is none who can guide him. أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ I bear witness, there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. He is alone and he has no partners. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And I also bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He is the worship of Allah and his final messenger. أَمَّا بَعَدْ Thereafter فَإِنَّ أَحْسَنَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ The best of speech is the book of Allah. وَخَيْرَ الْهُدَى هُدَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ wa sallam and the best of guidance is the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَإِنَّ شَرَّ الْأُمُورُ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the most evil of affairs are those matters which people have innovated into Islam فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ Because every newly innovated matter is a bid'ah وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every bid'ah is misguidance وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ And every misguidance only leads to the fire. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدَةٍ O mankind, O people, have taqwa of your Lord, the one who created everybody from a single being. وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا And then from this single being, he created his wife. وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً and then from both of them, he sent forth many men and many women. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ سُفَيَا اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ The one from whom you demand your rights. وَالْأَرْحَامِ And fear Allah regarding your families, your relatives, and your ties of kinship. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا Allah is always watching over you. Allah said, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatih. O people of Iman, fear Allah as He ought to be feared. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die except in a state of being Muslims. عباد الله, O worshippers of Allah, Allah has revealed upon us a book. And this book, the Qur'an, it contains much wisdom and many ayat. The examples and the parables which are set forth in the Quran are not like the examples and the parables of the other books. The stories which are mentioned in the Quran are not like the stories of the other books. Because the Quran, it is al haqqul mubin It is the clear truth. وَهُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ A guidance for the people of taqwa. يَهْدِي إِلَى الَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمْ It guides to that which is most upright. وَإِلَى الصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِينَ And it guides to the straight path. Allah said, إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ Verily this Qur'an يَهْدِي لِلَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمْ It guides to that which is upright. وَيُبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And it gives glad tidings to the believers. الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who do righteous deeds أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا That for them will be a great reward. And Allah said in the Quran وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالِ 
those are the parables and the examples nas. we set them forth for the people وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ However, those who truly understand the parables and the stories of the Qur'an are the people of Al-Aqal, the people of intelligence. So the believer, the mu'min, he recites the ayat in the Qur'an, he reads the parables and the examples of the Qur'an, he reads and listens to the stories which Allah mentions, and he ponders over them. He thinks about them and he sees what signs he can take from them. And this then increases him in his Iman. However, the disbeliever, the one who is disobedient, the one who is weak in his Iman, he listens to these ayat, he recites these parables and examples, and yet it does not have any effect upon his heart. And in the Quran, there is a great surah, a noble chapter which Allah mentions and he has called it Surat Luqman the chapter of Luqman and in this surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions the story of one of his righteous slaves a wali from his awliya a person of piety and at taqwa to whom Allah gave much wisdom and he blessed him with insight and knowledge and he guided him to saying that which was correct. Allah said, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ Verily, we gave Luqman al-hikmah, we gave him wisdom. أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ So he should show shukr to Allah. وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ And whoever shows gratitude to Allah, then he's only showing gratitude to himself, meaning, Whoever thanks Allah, he only benefits himself. وَمَنْ kafara, And whoever rejects the blessings of Allah, whoever disbelieves in the blessings, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ hamid. Then Allah is al-ghani, he is wealthy and he is not in need. And he is hamid, the one who is praised. So Luqman, he was a righteous man, a wali from the awliya of Allah. He was a hakim and he was a wise person whom Allah had given him and bestowed upon him wisdom. And Allah gave him wisdom and guided him to be a wali because of his truthfulness with Allah, because of his sidq, his truthfulness in his statements and his actions. So he would only speak a little and he would think and ponder a lot. And for this reason, Allah bestowed upon him wisdom. Ibn Kathir rahimullah, he mentions in the tafsir of this ayah that Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma said, Sami'tu Rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Lam yakun luqmanu nabiyan. Luqman, he was not a prophet. Walakin kana abdan. However, he was a worship of Allah. Kathir al tafakkur. And he used to ponder and think a lot. Husn al yaqeen. And he had good certainty in Allah. أحب الله تعالى. He loved Allah. فأحبه. So Allah loved him. فمن عليه بالحكمة. And so Allah bestowed upon him wisdom. And from the matters which explains to us the great status of Luqman al-Hakim. And he's nicknamed as Luqman al-Hakim. Luqman, the wise person, the wise man. From those matters which emphasize his great status, his lofty position with Allah, is that Allah named a surah by his name and he wasn't a prophet. And more than that, in this surah, Allah mentioned the advice and the admonishment that Luqman would give to his son. And this surah and these advices and these admonishments, which Allah mentions of Luqman al-Hakim towards his son, are an example for every father and every mother and every teacher and everybody who has any responsibility towards others. And for this reason, the obligation upon every single one of us, fathers, mothers, teachers, older brothers and older sisters, is that we take a, a stand and we contemplate these ayat. And we contemplate these wasaya, these admonishments, 
and these pieces of advice that Luqman would give to his son. And we should know that Allah did not mention the story of Luqman just as mere information. He didn't mention the story of Luqman in order for us to treat it as a fictional story that we read and we forget. Rather, he mentioned these admonishments that Luqman gave his son. He mentioned these ayat and his story, so we take a lesson from them. And that we use these ayat as an example or as a path and an avenue in how to cultivate our younger generation. And you will notice from the admonishment of Luqman al-Hakim that he uses beautiful soft words and sweet phrases and he calls out to his son in a gentle, affectionate manner. Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ When Luqman said to his son, وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ And he was admonishing him. He said, يَا بُنَيَّ Oh my son. Notice in this ayah that Allah mentions, Luqman said to his son, وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ And he was admonishing him. He was giving him ad an admonishment. He wasn't ordering him or commanding him. Rather, he was advising and admonishing him. And for this reason, the father, he is an advisor and an admonisher towards his children and the mother and the teacher and the imam and every person who has a responsibility. And what words did Luk Luqman use for his son? Did he say, oh boy or oh son? He said, Ya Bunayya, O oh my son, calling his son with affection and compassion and care, wanting goodness for him. And he repeats these words again and again and again. Ya Bunayya, Ya Bunayya, Ya Bunayya, O oh my son, O oh my son, O oh my son. And then he called him, or he gave him the first admonishment. He said, Ya Bunayya, O oh my son, La tushrik billah. Do not ascribe partners to Allah. Inna shirka la dhulmun azim. Because shirk is the most severe of oppression. So consider the first admonishment which Luk Luqman began with advising his son. He called him to a tawheed and he warned him against a shirk. And then he explained to him the danger and the severity of shirk. That there is no zulm, there is no oppression, there is no crime, there is no wrong which is as severe as a shirk. Which zulm and which crime, which oppression is more severe than for a person to reject the blessings of his creator, the blessings of his sustainer, the one who controls his life, the one who blesses him. And then instead of worshipping him, he worships others. And for this reason, Luqman, he began the admonishment and the advice of his son with the rectification of his aqidah, with the rectification of his tawheed, of his heart. And then after this, the second admonishment was mentioned. However, this is an admonishment from Allah for the rest of the people. Mentioned in the middle of the story of Luqman. Allah says, وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ That we, Allah, we have admonished and advised man with regards to his two parents. So look <coughs> at the great status of the parents. That Allah mentions them after mentioning his own right. He mentioned, إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ Verily a shirk, it is a severe oppression. And then after this he mentions the right of the two parents. He says, حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَحْنًا عَلَى وَحْنًا That the mother, she carries the child and she suffers weakness upon weakness. وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ And then she weans him. She breastfeeds him for two years. And then Allah orders, Anishkur li, so show gratitude to me. Wali wali 
and show gratitude to your two parents. Ilayya al Masir, to me is your return. So this is the wasiyah of Allah. This is the admonishment of Allah that every person should attach importance to. And this is the ad admonishment of the Lord, the creator of the heavens and the earth, that He linked the rights of His to the rights of the parents. The rights of the parents were mentioned immediately after the right of Allah. And He, he linked shukr, gratitude of Allah, to the gratitude of the parents. He mentioned tawheed, and then He mentioned obedience to the parents. He linked obedience to Allah and obedience to the parents. And he specified the mother. First he mentioned the walidain, both the father and the mother. And then he specif specifies the mother even farther, even more. That she carries the child. And she suffers, she suffers weakness upon weakness. And this weakness doesn't stop after pregnancy or after labor. Then she has to breastfeed him. And it doesn't stop there. Then her weakness carries on in cultivating the child. And even when the son is old and is an adult, then the striving and the caring of the mother, it carries on. And then Allah tells us how we should behave if our parents are non-Muslims. He said, وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ If both of your parents if they force you to commit shirk with me, if they, cause, if they cause you to disbelieve, if they obligate upon you to commit a shirk, or disobey Allah, or go against obedience to Allah, then Allah says, فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Then do not obey them. And notice Allah did not say in this ayah, disobey them. He said, do not obey them, even if they are kuffar. And they order you and they obligate, obl oblige upon you a shirk and kufr and ma'asi and sinning. Then do not obey them in that thing, in that order. But do not disobey them. In everything else, remain in their obedience. He said, وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا And keep a good companionship with them throughout their lives. And this is regarding the kuffar. If a person has two parents, and these two parents, not only are they mushrikeen and kuffar, but more than this, they are forcing the child to commit shirk. And they are ordering the child with al-kuffar. Even here, Allah did not say disobey them. He said, فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Do not obey them. Meaning, do not obey them in this issue, in this command. But aside from this, وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا Then live with them in a good manner. So if this is with parents who are kuffar and mushrikeen, and they are ordering their child with kuffar and shirk, then how about parents who are praying, parents of a tawheed, parents of al-iman, parents of righteousness? And then after this, Allah goes back to the advice or the admonishment of Luqman to his son. That Luqman said to him, Ya Buniya, O oh, Baniya, O oh, my son, إِنَّهَا إِن تَكُ مِثْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ مِنْ خَرْدَلٍ O oh, my son, if there is even seed of mustard, and this seed of mustard تَكُنْ فِي sakhra, it is inside a stone. O oh, فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ O oh, فِي الْأَرْضِ O oh, this seed of mustard, it is anywhere in the heavens or anywhere upon the earth. يَأْتِ بِهَا Allah. Then Allah can bring it. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَطِيفٌ خَبِيرٌ And Allah is subtle and He is always informed. So in this ayah, in this admonishment of Luqman to his son, Luqman, he reminds his son of the greatness of Allah. And he strengthens the relationship of the son with Allah. And when he wants to discipline the son, or cause the son to fear, and to stay away from oppression, and harming others, he reminds him regarding Allah. He says, O oh my son, Ya Buniya, O oh my son, if you were to do an act of disobedience, if you were to oppress another person, and this oppression, it was only the seed of a mustard, and then this seed, it is inside a rock, or it is somewhere in the heavens, or somewhere in the earth, 
with the vastness and the greatness of the heavens and the earth يأتي بها الله then Allah can bring forth the seed of mustard and therefore that oppression which you do is more severe and in this is a lesson for the fathers and the mothers and the teachers that when you want to discipline your child then don't discipline your child with your fear it isn't you who, should they, f who they fear in staying away from oppression but teach them the greatness of Allah teach them the attributes of Allah that if you oppress and if you do wrong I may not know as your father but Allah knows in fact if you oppress even a little amount then Allah knows the secrets so when we discipline our child or when we want to place some fear in them to make them stay away from haram then it isn't done in the fear of our punishment rather it is done based upon the greatness of Allah the names and the attributes of Allah the tawheed of Allah and disciplining them with the fear of Allah Jalla fil Ula and then after this Luqman he advises his son with the greatest action and this is the prayer he said Ya Bunayya O oh my son Aqim is Salah establish the prayer so after Tawheed and after knowing the greatness of Allah and loving Allah and fearing Allah and knowing the ability of Allah and his knowledge and his awareness and how subtle Allah is then the next most important thing is the Salah for this reason Luqman he advises his son he admonishes his son Ya Bunayya Aqim is Salah O oh my son establish the prayer and he did not say Ya Bunayya O oh my son Salli go pray he said establish the prayer meaning establish the prayer as it should be prayed in its correct time in its correct manner fulfilling the conditions and the pillars and the wajibat and so on and so forth and after you have done this and you have Iman and you have knowledge and you have started doing righteous actions then Islam does not stop there now is the time to start benefiting other people so the next advice he gives him he says وَأْمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ and go order with goodness go enjoin goodness call the people to Al-Islam وَنْهَا عَنِ munkar, and forbid people from doing evil and all of this what does it require وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكَ and be patient because at tawheed and staying away from shirk and being obedient to your parents and being consistent and upright upon the prayer and giving da'wah calling to Allah warning against evil all of this requires a person to be patient so he says وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكَ so be patient in the face of everything you will face all of the afflictions and the talking of the people and the slandering of the people against you be patient regarding this إِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ because this is from the affairs which requires determination and then Luqman he teaches his son beautiful manners and upright morals in how he should talk to people and be with people and how he should walk upon the earth Luqman says to his son وَلَا تُصَعِّرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ that do not turn your cheek away from the people Me meaning do not belittle the people do not look down upon the people do not turn your cheek away from the people in contempt towards them وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ marha, and do not walk upon the earth arrogantly triumphantly always rejoicing do not walk upon the earth like this why إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فخور. because Allah does not love every self-deluded arrogant person who is always boasting and then he said وَقْصِدْ فِي مَشِكَ that instead of walking like this and treating others and belittling others and showing contempt towards others وَقْصِدْ فِي مَشِكَ be humble in your walking be moderate in your walking وَغْضُضْ مِنْ صَوْتِكَ and lower your voice إِنَّ أَنْكَرَ الْأَصْوَاتِ لَصَوْتُ الْحَمِيرِ because the most despised of sounds and voices is the voice of a donkey i do not shout and do not insult rather lower your voice and be humble in front of the rest of the creation oh my brothers and sisters how beautiful is this admonishment and how beautiful are these pieces of advice that luqman al-hakim gave towards his son and his child and upon every single one of us is to contemplate these admonishments and implement them within ourselves and then also 
use these ayat and these wasaya in admonishing and advising and educating the children. And these advices and admonishments, they were mentioned in the 31st surah of the Qur'an. It is called Surah Luqman, in between ayah number 12 and ayah number 19. <coughs> Bismillah, walhamdulillah, was salatu was salamu ala rasulillah. We mentioned in the first khutbah the advice of the, the caring and compassionate and affectionate father towards his son and his child. And he advises him in everything which will safeguard his religion and safeguard his dunya and safeguard the akhirah. And this is the obligation upon every father and mother, upon every teacher, upon every masjid, upon every imam, upon every person who has a responsibility towards others. That we strive our best in advising each other and especially the younger ones, especially the youth. Because our youth, our children, they have in front of them a path and this is a path to their future. However, this path which they are about to begin, there are many dangers upon this path. There are many obstacles upon this path. Many predators, many animals, bandits, shayateen amongst the jinn and amongst mankind. Those who will divert them away from as sirat al-mustaqim, from the straight path. And remember these admonishments that Luqman gave to his son. Firstly, we should show shukr and gratitude to Allah. And we should not reject and show kufr against him. Secondly, warning him against a shirk and explaining how severe a shirk is. Thirdly, obedience to the parents and specifying the mother. And then how a person should live even if his parents are non-Muslims. Though you should not obey them only in that matter in which they order with disobedience. However, apart from that, dunya ma'rufa, Live with them in a good manner. And then Luqman, he advised his son and he admonished him with the greatness of Allah regarding the knowledge of Allah to establish Tawheed in his heart, to establish a relationship between the son, his son and between Allah. And then he ordered him with a salah and he ordered him with Al-Amru bil Ma'ruf wa Nahi anil Munkar. And then he cultivated him upon patience. And then finally he admonished him, him with beautiful manners and good morals in walking and talking and how he should not look down at other people and how he should lower his voice. Ayyuhal ibad, O worshippers of Allah, O fathers, O mothers, O teachers. These are the types of admonishments that we should attach importance to when it comes to our children. And, and that which affects their akhirah is more important than that which affects the dunya. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma izza al-islam wa al-muslimin. Allahumma adhilla al-shirk wa al-mushrikin. اللهم دمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم إنا نسألك الإخلاص في القول والعمل اللهم أحينا مسلمين وتوفنا مسلمين والحقنا بالصالحين اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها زكها وأنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم إنا نسألك إيمانا صادقا ويقينا راسخا وتوبة نسوحا اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم بارك لنا في أموالنا وبارك لنا في أوقاتنا وأزواجنا وأولادنا وذريتنا واجعلنا مباركين أينما كنا عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون أقم الصلاة إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا 
Indeed, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, seek His aid, and ask His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our sins. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil which is in ourselves. Man yahdihillah fala mudillalah Whoever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide him. Wa man yudlil fala hadiyalah And whoever Allah chooses to be misguided, there is none who can guide him. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah I bear witness there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah He is alone and he has no partners Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh And I also bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he is the worship of Allah and his final messenger Amma ba'd Thereafter, فَإِنَّ أَحْسَنَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ The best of speech is the book of Allah. وَخَيْرَ الْهُدَى هُدَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. And the best of guidance is the guidance of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَإِنَّ شَرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the most evil of affairs are those matters which people have innovated into Islam. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ Because every newly innovated matter is a bid'ah. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every bid'ah is misguidance. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ And every misguidance only leads to the fire. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدَةٍ O mankind, O people, have taqwa of your Lord, the one who created everybody from a single being. وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا And then from this single being, he created his wife. وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً And then from both of them, he sent forth many men and many women. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ سُفِيَ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ The one from whom you demand your rights. والأرحام and fear Allah regarding your families, your relatives, and your ties of kinship. إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا. Allah is always watching over you. Allah said, يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته. O people of Iman, fear Allah as He ought to be feared. ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون. And do not die except in a state of being Muslims. Ibad Allah, O worshippers of Allah, Allah has revealed upon us a book. And this book, the Quran, it contains much wisdom and many ayat. The examples and the parables which are set forth in the Quran are not like the examples and the parables of the other books. The stories which are mentioned in the Qur'an are not like the stories of the other books. Because the Qur'an, it is al-haqqul mubeen. It is the clear truth. وَهُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ A guidance for the people of taqwa. يَهْدِي إِلَى الَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمْ It guides to that which is most upright. وَإِلَى الصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِينَ And it guides to the straight path. Allah said, إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ Verily, this Qur'an, يَهْدِي لِلَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمْ It guides to that which is upright. وَيُبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And it gives glad tidings to the believers. الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who do righteous deeds. أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا That for them will be a great reward. And Allah said in the Qur'an, وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالِ Those are the parables. And the examples, نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ We set them forth for the people. وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ However, those who truly understand the parables and the stories of the Qur'an are the people of Al-Aqal, the people of intelligence. So the believer, the mu'min, he recites the ayat in the Qur'an. He reads the parables and the examples of the Qur'an. He reads and listens to the stories which Allah mentions. And 
he ponders over them he thinks about them and he sees what signs he can take from them and this then increases him in his iman however the disbeliever the one who is disobedient the one who is weak in his iman he listens to these ayat he recites these parables and examples and yet it does not have any effect upon his heart and in the quran there is a great surah a noble chapter which allah mentions and he has called it surah luqman the chapter of luqman and in this surah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions the story of one of his righteous slaves a wali from his awliya a person of piety and at taqwa to whom allah gave much wisdom and he blessed him with insight and knowledge and he guided him to saying that which was correct allah said وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ Verily, we gave Luqman al-hikmah, we gave him wisdom. أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ So he should show shukr to Allah. وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ And whoever shows gratitude to Allah, then he's only showing gratitude to himself. Meaning, whoever thanks Allah, he only benefits himself. وَمَنْ كَفَرَ and whoever rejects the blessings of Allah, whoever disbelieves in the blessings, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ Then Allah is Al-Ghani, He is wealthy and He is not in need. And He is Hamid, the one who is praised. So Luqman, he was a righteous man, a wali from the awliya of Allah. He was a hakim and he was a wise person, whom Allah had given him and bestowed upon him wisdom. And Allah gave him wisdom, and guided him to be a wali because of his truthfulness with Allah, because of his sidq, his truthfulness in his statements and his actions. So he would only speak a little, and he would think and ponder a lot. And for this reason, Allah bestowed upon him wisdom. Ibn Kathir, rahimullah, he mentions in the tafsir of this ayah that Ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah said, سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying لم يكن لقمان نبيا لقمان he was not a prophet ولكن كان عبدا however he was a worship of Allah كثير التفكر and he used to ponder and think a lot حسن اليقين and he had good certainty in Allah أحب الله تعالى he loved Allah فَأَحَبَّهُ So Allah loved him. فَمَنَّ عَلَيْهِ بِالْحِكْمَةِ And so Allah bestowed upon him wisdom. And from the matters which explains to us the great status of Luqman al-Hakim and he's nicknamed as Luqman al-Hakim. Luqman, the wise person, the wise man. From those matters which emphasize his great status, his lofty position with Allah, is that Allah named a surah by his name and he wasn't a prophet and more than that in this surah Allah mentioned the advice and the admonishment that Luqman would give to his son and this surah and these advices and these admonishments which Allah mentions of Luqman al-Hakim towards his son are an example for every father and every mother and every teacher and everybody who has any responsibility towards others. And for this reason, the obligation upon every single one of us, fathers, mothers, teachers, older brothers and older sisters, is that we take a, a stand and we contemplate these ayat, and we contemplate these wasaya, these admonishments, and these pieces of advice that Luqman would give to his son. And we should know that Allah did not mention the story of Luqman just as mere information. He didn't mention the story of Luqman in order for us to treat it as a fictional story that we read and we forget. Rather, he mentioned these admonishments that Luqman gave his son. He mentioned these ayat and his story so we take a lesson from them. And that we use these ayat as an example 
or as a path and an avenue in how to cultivate our younger generation. And you will notice from the admonishment of Luqman al-Hakim that he uses beautiful soft words and sweet phrases and he calls out to his son in a gentle, affectionate manner. Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ When Luqman said to his son, وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ And he was admonishing him. He said, يَا بُنَيَّهُ O my son. Notice in this ayah that Allah mentions, Luqman said to his son, وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ And he was admonishing him. He was giving him ad an admonishment. He wasn't ordering him or commanding him. Rather, he was advising and admonishing him. And for this reason, the father, he is an advisor and an admonisher towards his children. And the mother, and the teacher, and the imam, and every person who has a responsibility. And what words did Luk Luqman use for his son? Did he say, oh boy, or oh son? He said, ya bunayya, oh my son, calling his son with affection and compassion and care wanting goodness for him and he repeats these words again and again and again ya bunayya ya bunayya ya bunayya o my son o my son o my son and then he called him or he gave him the first admonishment he said ya bunayya o my son la tushrik billah do not ascribe partners to allah Inna shirk la dhulmun azim, because shirk is the most severe of oppression. So consider the first admonishment which Luk Luqman began with advising his son. He called him to a tawheed, and he warned him against a shirk. And then he explained to him the danger and the severity of shirk, that there is no dhulm, there is no oppression, there is no crime. There is no wrong which is as severe as a shirk, which dhulm and which crime, which oppression is more severe than for a person to reject the blessings of his creator, the blessings of his sustainer, the one who controls his life, the one who blesses him. And then instead of worshipping him, he worships others. And for this reason, Luqman, he began the admonishment and the advice of his son with the rectification of his aqidah, with the rectification of his tawheed, of his heart. And then after this, the second admonishment was mentioned. However, this is an admonishment from Allah for the rest of the people. Mentioned in the middle of the story of Luqman. Allah says, وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ that we, Allah, we have admonished and advised man with regards to his two parents. So look <coughs> at the great status of the parents. That Allah mentions them after mentioning his own right. He mentioned, Inna shirk ala dhulmun azim. Verily a shirk. It is a severe oppression. And then after this he mentions the right of the two parents. He says, حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَحْنًا عَلَى وَحْنًا That the mother, she carries the child and she suffers weakness upon weakness. وَفِصَالُهُ fi amain, And then she weans him. She breastfeeds him for two years. And then Allah orders, Anishkur li, so show gratitude to me. Wali wali deika, and show gratitude to your two parents. Ilayya al masir, to me is your return. So this is the wasiyah of Allah. This is the admonishment of Allah that every person should attach importance to. And this is the ad admonishment of the Lord, the creator of the heavens and the earth, that He linked the rights of His to the rights of the parents. The rights of the parents were mentioned immediately after the right of Allah. And he, he linked shukr, gratitude of Allah, to the gratitude of the parents. He mentioned tawheed 
and then he mentioned obedience to the parents. He linked obedience to Allah and obedience to the parents. And he specified the mother. First he mentioned the walidain, both the father and the mother. And then he specifies the mother even farther, even more. That she carries the child. And she suffers, she suffers weakness upon weakness. And this weakness doesn't stop after pregnancy or after labor. Then she has to breastfeed him. And it doesn't stop there. Then her weakness carries on in cultivating the child. And even when the son is old and is an adult, then the striving and the caring of the mother, it carries on. And then Allah tells us how we should behave if our parents are non-Muslims. He said, وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ If both of your parents, if they force you to commit shirk with me, if they cause, if they cause you to disbelieve, if they obligate upon you to commit a shirk, or disobey Allah, or go against obedience to Allah, then Allah says, فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Then do not obey them. And notice Allah did not say in this ayah, disobey them. He said, do not obey them. Even if they are kuffar, and they order you, and they obligate, ob oblige upon you a shirk and kufr and ma'asi and sinning, then do not obey them in that thing, in that order. But do not disobey them. In everything else, remain in their obedience. He said, وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا and keep a good companionship with them throughout their lives. And this is regarding the kuffar. If a person has two parents, and these two parents, not only are they mushrikeen and kuffar, but more than this, they are forcing the child to commit shirk. And they are ordering the child with al-kuffar. Even here, Allah did not say disobey them. He said, فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Do not obey them. Meaning, do not obey them in this issue, in this command. But aside from this, وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا Then live with them in a good manner. So if this is with parents who are kuffar and mushrikeen, and they are ordering their child with kuffar and shirk, then how about parents who are praying, parents of a tawheed parents of al-iman, parents of righteousness. And then after this, Allah goes back to the advice or the admonishment of Luqman to his son. That Luqman said to his son, Ya Buniya, O Buniya, O my son, Innaha in taku mithqala habbatin min khardal, O my son, if there is even seed of mustard, and this seed of mustard takun fi sakhra, it is inside a stone, O fi samawati, O fi al-ard, Oh, this seed of mustard, it is anywhere in the heavens or anywhere upon the earth. Ya'ti bihallah. Then Allah can bring it. Inna Allah latifun khabir. And Allah is subtle and He is always informed. So in this ayah, in this admonishment of Luqman to his son, Luqman, he reminds his son of the greatness of Allah. And he strengthens the relationship of the son with Allah. And when he wants to discipline the son or cause the son to fear and to stay away from oppression and harming others he reminds him regarding Allah he says oh my son ya buniya oh my son if you were to do an act of disobedience if you were to oppress another person and this oppression it was only the seed of a mustard and then this seed it is inside a rock or it is somewhere in the heavens or somewhere in the earth with the vastness and the greatness of the heavens and the earth Ya'ti Allah. then Allah can bring forth the seed of mustard and therefore that oppression which you do is more severe and in this is a lesson for the fathers and the mothers and the teachers that when you want to discipline your child then don't discipline your child with your fear it isn't you who, should they f who they fear in staying away from oppression. But teach them the greatness of Allah. Teach them the attributes of Allah. That if you oppress and if you do wrong, I may not know as your father, but Allah knows. 
In fact, if you oppress even a little amount, then Allah knows the secrets. So when we discipline our child, or when we want to place some fear in them, to make them stay away from haram, then it isn't done in the fear of our punishment. Rather, it is done based upon the greatness of Allah, the names and the attributes of Allah, the tawheed of Allah, and disciplining them with the fear of Allah Jalla fil Ula. And then after this, Luqman, he advises his son with the greatest action. And this is the prayer. He said, Ya Bunayya, O oh my son, Aqim is Salah, establish the prayer. So after Tawheed, and after knowing the greatness of Allah, and loving Allah, and fearing Allah, and knowing the ability of Allah, and His knowledge, and His awareness, and how subtle Allah is, then the next most important thing is the Salah. For this reason, Luqman, he advises his son, he admonishes his son, Ya Bunayya, Aqim is Salah. O oh my son, establish the prayer. And he did not say, Ya Bunayya, O oh my son, Salli, go pray. He said, establish the prayer. Meaning, establish the prayer as it should be prayed. In its correct time, in its correct manner, fulfilling the conditions and the pillars and the wajibat and so on and so forth. And after you have done this, and you have iman and you have knowledge and you have started doing righteous actions, then Islam does not stop there. Now is the time to start benefiting other people. So the next advice he gives him, he says, وَأْمُرْ ma'ruf," And go order with goodness. Go enjoin goodness. Call the people to Al-Islam. وَنْهَا anil munkar," And forbid people from doing evil. And all of this, what does it require? وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا asabak," And be patient. Because at tawheed and staying away from shirk, and being obedient to your parents, and being consistent and upright upon the prayer and giving da'wah, calling to Allah, warning against evil, all of this requires a person to be patient. So he says, وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكْ So be patient in the face of everything you will face, all of the afflictions and the talking of the people and the slandering of the people against you. Be patient regarding this. إِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ because this is from the affairs which requires determination. And then Luqman, he teaches his son beautiful manners and upright morals in how he should talk to people and be with people and how he should walk upon the earth. Luqman says to his son, وَلَا تُصَعِّرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ That do not turn your cheek away from the people. Me meaning, do not belittle the people. Do not look down upon the people. Do not turn your cheek away from the people in contempt towards them. وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ maraha, And do not walk upon the earth arrogantly, triumphantly, always rejoicing. Do not walk upon the earth like this. Why? إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فخور. Because Allah does not love every self-deluded, arrogant person who is always boasting. And then he said, وَقْصِدْ فِي مَشِكَ that instead of walking like this and treating others and belittling others and showing contempt towards others, waqsid fi mashika. Be humble in your walking. Be moderate in your walking. Waqbud min sautika. And lower your voice. Inna ankar al aswati la sautul hamir. Because the most despised of sounds and voices is the voice of a donkey. I do not shout and do not insult. Rather, lower your voice. And be humble in front of the rest of the creation. O oh, my brothers and sisters, how beautiful is this admonishment. And how beautiful are these pieces of advice that Luqman al-Hakim gave towards his son and his child. And upon every single one of us is to contemplate these admonishments. And implement them within ourselves. And then also use these ayat and these wasaya in admonishing and advising and educating the children. And these advices and admonishments, they were mentioned in the 31st surah of the Qur'an. It is called Surat Luqman, in between ayah number 12 and ayah number 19. <coughs> Bismillah. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, was salatu was salamu ala rasulillah. We mentioned in the first khutbah the advice of 
the, the caring and compassionate and affectionate father towards his son and his child and he advises him in everything which will safeguard his religion and safeguard his dunya and safeguard the akhirah and this is the obligation upon every father and mother upon every teacher upon every masjid upon every imam upon every person who has a responsibility towards others that we strive our best in advising each other and especially the younger ones especially the youth because our youth our children they have in front of them a path and this is a path to their future however this path which they are about to begin there are many dangers upon this path there are many obstacles upon this path many predators many animals bandits shay shayateen amongst the jinn and amongst mankind those who will divert them away from as-sirat al-mustaqim from the straight path and remember these admonishments that luqman gave to his son firstly we should show shukr and gratitude to allah and we should not reject and show kufr against him secondly warning him against a shirk and explaining how severe a shirk is thirdly obedience to the parents and specifying the mother and then how a person should live even if his parents are non-muslims that you should not obey them only in that matter in which they order with disobedience however apart from that live with them in a good manner and then Luqman he advised his son and he admonished him with the greatness of Allah regarding the knowledge of Allah to establish Tawheed in his heart to establish a relationship between the son, his son and between Allah and then he ordered him with a salah and he ordered him with al amru bil ma'ruf wa nahi anil munkar and then he cultivated him upon patience and then finally he admonished him him with beautiful manners and good morals in walking and talking and how he should not look down at other people and how he should lower his voice ayyuhal ibad o worshippers of allah o fathers o mothers o teachers these are the types of admonishments that we should attach importance to when it comes to our children and and that which affects their akhirah is more important than that which affects their dunya inna allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin kama sallayta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim innaka hamidun majid اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أذل الشرك والمشركين اللهم دمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم إنا نسألك الإخلاص في القول والعمل اللهم أحينا مسلمين وتوفنا مسلمين والحقنا بالصالحين اللهم آتي نفوسنا تقواها زكها وأنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم إنا نسألك إيمانا صادقا ويقينا راسخا وتوبة نسوحا اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم بارك لنا في أموالنا وبارك لنا في أوقاتنا وأزواجنا وأولادنا وذريتنا واجعلنا مباركين أينما كنا عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون أقم الصلاة